physical break-in is something that happens, what, what if someone just steals all these off a shelf? And, you know, is that going to hit your budget? They're like, oh, we never thought of that. I'm like, yeah. What, what, if, what if a really bad person gets into a room and kind of just messes with this? Is this a problem? And they're like, oh, sh how did you get this photo? I'm like, well, I was standing in this room with my team, and we popped the door. I'll show you how. This is not the focus of today's talk. You want to learn about how lockpick tools work? Come to the lockpick village. The solution to that stupid hinge problem, by the way, is this. It's called a security hinge. When the door swings shut, that peg pops into the other side of the hinge. You can, you can bang those hinge pins out. You're not yanking it out of the frame. Now, that's the left side of the slide. What's on the right side of the slide? Those are called jam pins. If you don't have a security hinge, you've got a regular hinge on every door in your facility, and you don't want to rehang your doors, buy some jam pins. What do you do with them? Well, take these two screws, pull them out, replace them with jam pins. Take these two screws, pull them out, replace them with nothing. You now have a security hinge. They did. And now, like Traveler Hook, this is our so go-to attack door, tool for, for door latches. Like so here's a locked door. And a big power, you know, this is a water company, actually. And, like, that door is open. This is the latch. This is what is supposed to hold the door closed, whether someone leans on it or a stiff breeze blows on it. And for a long time, that's all doors had. Remember when doors all looked like this, right? But now they look like this. What is this other thing? What is this other button? That is not the latch. That is the dead latch plunger or the dead latch mechanism. And unless you know how these work, you might not realize when the door is shut, that's supposed to be held back by the strike side the door. Now, this is not talking about the latch now. I'm talking about the inside handle of the door, if you're on the secure side of the door. I leverage these all the time on jobs. Here's a door with a crash bar. It's locked. That was a bent piece of wire. Say, on this slide, what could we have done? You guys talked about it, right? You could, quote, lock the deadbolt. Well. Let's talk about deadbolts for a second. Again, this is usually fire code. There has to be a thumb turn on most deadbolts. You ever seen one of these? Know what it is? Yeah, that's a thumb turn flipper. We stick it through the door just like we would to hit the crash bar, and we can spin the deadbolt. And then we slap the crash bar, and then we open it. There are hackier solutions that will frustrate the hell out of me, especially if I'm going in blind. I'm like, why is my frick? I can't hit it. God damn it, damn it. <laughs> I said, what the hell is this? You know what they told me it was? Like sliding doors for your closets in your bedroom, they can have these little plastic guides that go in the track. He's like, yeah, we went to Lowe's and we found a bunch of them and just kind of like bolted them on the door. And it, we tried to make a, that under door tool that you gave us last year and like we tried to make it work. We couldn't, we were like, I was like, I don't think I could make this work either. That's frustrating as hell. It's a, that's like the greatest kludgiest solution I've ever seen to this problem. And it's brilliant, man. It's freaking brilliant. I love it. This is called a double ball mechanism. These are two solid steel ball bearings that only fall inward if this cammed control cylinder turns. That is a nice lock. That is a, a non-shimmable padlock. Not all padlocks are constructed this way. Not all padlocks are this robust. They're out there. They're not crazy expensive. I'll give you some good examples in a bit. What about the pin stacks? Again, I said I wasn't talking about picking in this talk. There's something else you can do. It's ridiculous that this exists in, in this day and age. This was a problem ages ago that we thought we had stamped out in the manufacturing world. Comb picking, overlifting with comb picks. What is this? Most locks should not be able to be what's called overlifted. Door locks, padlocks, you name it. This is way more of a problem with padlocks today, though. On the shelf right now, I'm talking go to the store, locks you can do this to. There's so much room in the housing that you reach in with a comb pick, you literally lift all the pins completely out of the plug, and then it just spins around. There's nothing restricting it. This is absolutely a vulnerability on locks that are in production right now, on the shelves. And the fact that this was a problem that the industry almost forgot, and now we're like, wait, didn't we never, this, what? Sure enough, Master 140 series, the little brass body, Master 150, Master 142, the little black padlocks that we have to play with, comb pickable right now. Where do we encounter these? Well, everywhere you expect, right? Like every job I do, every big utility company I've ever hit, I'm just banging locks open all the time on their fence line. I'm getting into their facilities. This was one way out in the field somewhere. Pop that open. You know, I'm like at a holding reservoir, just like, 
oh, I could just maybe roll a 50-gallon drum of something out of my truck into this. Should I do that? No, that would be bad. On top of a big sub subterranean storage tank, like, again, just craptacular padlocks out in the middle of nowhere where no one's watching. It, I don't like to spread FUD, because, like, let's be honest, no one cares about Podunk Nowhere Water Utility Company. No terrorists are on that freaking hit list there. But still, like, if you want it, for liability purposes alone, like getting on top of water towers, maybe you're really rednecky and that's how you propose marriage to somebody like, I don't know, with spray paint. Like, yeah, just friggin' this is a little super bypassable master lock to protecting the whole little, I, I don't work for any of these companies, but I have a list of locks that I just love. And every solution that I'm showing you up here is not insanely expensive. You could have the worst door imaginable in your server room that is vulnerable to all of this, and you have to do all of this, and you're out, like, you know, maybe a thou. Really less than that, honestly. You are solving with your facilities team, doing a couple days work around the door sites, just tightening up some tolerances. A bag of tools gets you way more protection than a whole lot of other stuff that people are trying to sell you. And I'm happy to talk about that. I'm happy to walk around your sites one day if you want to bring me out. It's not hard. Just please stay safe out there, and thank you for listening. <laughs>